proud members of the Podbelly Network. What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, come on, you know I don't watch that shit. Why not? Too scared? No, no, it's just, what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. Sixty-one. Uh, this is Kim and Kat stay alive, maybe, and we're a horror movie comedy podcast. We're gonna tell you the entirety of a horror movie, spoilers and all. We're gonna play a little game to stay alive. Yeah. Um. Hi. Hello. How are you? I. You know. I. It feels like a weird day. We're it is recording a weird day. on a weird day. Mm-hmm. I feel off. Yeah, I feel very it off. It feels too. earlier than usual. It is earlier. When you texted me and you were like, on my way to you, I was like, uh, What? Oh, am I am I ahead of the I'm am I early today? It feels weird. You're Everything like an, feels weird. you're like an hour earlier than you normally get here. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. So I was like, Oh my gosh, I gotta <laughs> get all my stuff together. Cool. <laughs> well, cheers to the morning. Cheers. To the early to the, morn on a the, weird day. To the early morn shot. Dino that we're holes taking. out. Tits up. Oh, God. Are shots different in the morning, too? Are Guys, I'm off. <laughs> I'm off today. You won't hear this, but we just needed like a two minute break while Kim's esophagus regenerated. <laughs> You know when things go down the wrong tube? My whiskey went down the wrong tube and then it, guys, my lungs started to choke on it and I <laughs> died for a minute. There's it like was, tears in my eyes right now. It was really touch and go for a minute, you guys. <laughs> We're off today. It's, it's uh, a weird day. Which is also, this is also my birthday episode. Oh my God, is it your birthday episode? Yeah. Today? Right now. Oh, I'm so I'm I'm so sorry. Why are you birthday? So, thank you. <laughs> well, it's not my actual birthday. We're not recording on my birthday. I know, but in my brain, <laughs> I was preparing to be like, happy birthday, Katrin. Well, here's the thing. And then I just <laughs> <laughs> died for a minute and didn't know anything. Well, also, you were the worst best friend. No, you would have figured it out when I told you the title of my movie, which is Happy Birthday to Me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I meant to do a thing. I mean, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah, but what were you planning on doing? I don't know, like sing to you, have a surprise, blow out a candle right now. Oh, mm. it's fine. It's all good. I don't need it. It's not every day that you turn 27. Oh, you're right. It's not. <laughs> it's a big one. Getting closer to the big 3-0. <laughs> um, yeah, it's my birthday. I'm not, at the time I'm recording, I'm not sure... <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing. I I feel like what we used to do f- when we were much younger, like in college, is like we would celebrate our birthday for like three full months. <laughs> yeah, like the entire month, the birthday month. Yeah. Um, And I just feel like I don't have as much energy for that anymore. So like, I think that's just a young thing. It's not about energy. Like, I don't even want to do that anymore. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'd like to celebrate one day. But what I mean is that like, when I'm not planning like a month long extravaganza, I'm like, how do other people celebrate their like? What do other people do on their birthday? What am I supposed well, like? What am I supposed to do if I it's mean, not a month long party? Planned a month long party in multiple years. So and this what is, have you done? Just I, one day. I, I of don't something. recall any of it, and I feel like weirdly stressed about it. I feel like last year reason. was fun. Eric does all the planning. Like he's amazing. Like oh, I just let so him. So he's just planning something this year. I guess, but I, like I also feel like I have, you know, guilt issues where I'm like, oh, I don't want anyone to go to any trouble. Like it's a whole thing. I have a whole bunch you of do stuff have a happening thing about that. Remember when we had to yell at you to be like, look, we'll buy bridesmaids dresses that are more than twenty five dollars. I do you recall bitch. that. I'm so glad that you guys did that. Yeah, I just I don't know. I'm just accommodating sometimes. But I think that's something to think about. I'm not. I, I like. I really want to get. Like, I'm just like. I don't know. Talk about it in therapy. For real though, like that's like an ownership situation, and probably it's um. I actually read something the other day. It was like it's a response to trauma to make sure everything's okay. Oh fuck yeah! Like. Yeah. That's like a, tra- or that's a, a, not a response. It's a trauma response. Yeah. So it's just like a built-in response, which means it's not actually you. Right. So therefore, it's something you can change. 
I really liked my birthday last year when we went to that cool magic show. Yeah, I loved that, that magic was show. Fucking awesome sauce. If you guys are ever in Los Angeles, go to Black Rabbit Rose. I'm not going to tell you anything else. It was really fun. It's just so fucking cool. Um, so yeah, it's my birthday Yay. today. I can't wait to hear. Oh my god, happy birthday! What future Ketrin is going to do <laughs> in two and a half weeks? Well, Ketrin. Yes. I love you so much. I love you too. And I'm so grateful that you were born. Aw, thanks. I'm pretty grateful that I was born as well. You're one of my favorite people in the world. Really? You make my life better. Thanks, Bernsey. Mm-hmm. You make my life better. Thanks. Thanks. So, I yeah. I hope you have a happy birthday. Well, and I... Cheers to this year. Cheers. Let's cheers May our... We not choke on more whiskey. <laughs> Any time that this year. That was intense, you guys. <laughs> That was, I thought I was going to throw up for a I, second. I thought you were going to throw up. And I was like, watch the mic, though. Just not on the mic, please. <laughs> I was like, what can I grab to vomit into in this moment? I mean, you do have 14 cups over there. so <laughs> yeah, but they're all full, full and ready to drink. I'm glad they're not full of vomit. What if I just tried to throw it back into the shot glass? <laughs> just a little tiny. <laughs> That's from a movie. It's from Wayne's World when like he pulls out a teeny little Dixie cup and he's like, if you're going to spew... Spew into this. <laughs> wow. I haven't thought about that movie in a long time. <laughs> Someone commented on, oh, uh, Christine <laughs> commented on my headshot the other day. Whoa, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> it's like, I love you. That's amazing. You're my Abraham Lincoln. Um, well, I hope that I have a better birthday than the person whose birthday it is in the oh, movie. Oh, no. That I <laughs> She had a rough birthday. Do we have any other business we have to talk about? No, I just want to talk about your birthday and you. Okay. So here we go. I watched a movie called Happy Birthday to Me. (laughs) And when I started it, I was like, happy birthday to me. I I was like, it's interesting that that statement could be read different ways. You'll you'll hear why. (laughs) I literally just Googled like birthday horror movies. And this was the one that I picked because it was hard. literally yeah, no, I, happy birthday. I did to notice me. at least five birthday yeah. movies added to your list. <laughs> <laughs> the past there were weeks. like some weird ones though, because I was like, why is this a bir-? like? There were ones that came up that were like birthday movie, and it was like frogs. I was like, what? 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 I guess it's just like someone's birthday in the movie Frogs. Oh, just any time. Like, that's not really celebrity. what I'm talking about. Um, um, oh, do we want to talk about Pod Belly? Oh yeah, so. You guys, if you you've probably noticed like our little um, like pre-roll little intro at the beginning of our episodes now that says we're proud members of the Podbelly Network. Woohoo! Well, we are proud members of the Podbelly Network. I'm so uh, excited. Yeah, we're super excited. These are really impressively go-getter guys that are amazing at promoting uh, the podcasts that are on their network. They've got some great ones on there now. So if you just go to podbellynetwork.com, you can see all of the other uh, podcasts that are on there. But I mean, the one that you should worry about the most is us. Come and cut, stay alive. Maybe we're on there. Um, so yeah, go check them out. They're, they're, they're great, great people. And we're super excited to be working with them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Happy boyth day to me. Yay. Dead or alive. Uh, we have a lot of dead or alive because there's literally a click of 10 children. Great. One whole click. So Ginny. Alive. Dad. Dad. D- did you just repeat the word dad or did you say dead? <laughs> I said dead. Oh, okay. I think. <laughs> my accent. What I heard was dad. Dad. <laughs> I think it's like, just. Yep. My <laughs> accent. I was listening back to the one where we say my stepdad's name Barry. Barry. And I was like, no, I understand when I say them, they might sound very exactly the same. The same. But they're not the my mouth movements are different. Are different, but they sound exactly it's the, the same, same as Aaron and Erin. Those are two different words. Aaron and Erin is what it's. Uh, Those are two different words. Aaron and Erin, and everyone from Philly knows it. All right, I'm going to A A R O N versus E R I N. I'm going to call Philly up and be like, guys, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, Ann. It, sorry, I don't know how you pronounce it in Philly, <laughs> but it's A N N. Ann. Ann. 
Not Ian. Yo, what he's doing? Where's Ian? <laughs> Is she dead or alive? She's dead. Mom. True. Alive. <laughs> True. <laughs> Mom. True. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> the whiskey's in my lungs. <laughs> oh god. I think I'm dying. Oh god. ATN, true or false? <laughs> ATN. False. <laughs> uh, Greg. Greg. Dead. Rudy. Alive. Steve. Dead. Amelia. Alive. Maggie. Dead. Alfred. Alive. And Bernadette. Bernadette. <laughs> alive. What's happening? What? Do you know someone named Bernadette? No. Do you, do you have a particular love for that name? No. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Oh my God. Something's wrong. Get so um, excited that I, I don't know what's happening. I guess when whiskey goes directly into your lungs, you, instead of your stomach, you, you go, go insane. A little crazy. Yeah. I'm still so mad at myself for not remembering that this was your birthday episode. Why? What were you going to do? I don't know. I was going to maybe have like a cupcake or something for you to blow out. Well, you can have a cupcake. And now I failed as a friend <laughs> and the podcast partner. No, you can have a cupcake for me. On my actual birthday. But it's more fun this way. Okay. We'll just do some really cool social media posts and make people like me. Great. I will. <laughs> um, Can you, your best friend Bernadette, is she dead or alive? I don't remember I said something. Oh, I didn't hear it. <laughs> alive. Okay. <laughs> Who All knows right. if that was my first answer. I couldn't tell you. <clears throat> oh my. Okay. <laughs> so there's a woman walking out of a dorm apartment building smiling walking down the street the age of these people is so unclear to me okay because this took place in 1981 where everybody looks like a grown adult but then they were in high school classes but then they were also drinking but then they also were maybe in a boarding school or is it a college i have uh. i to this moment i have no idea how old any of these people are they are truly the epitome of 10 to 35. So we're in boarding school and or college. College. Yes. Or high school. I, it's totally unclear. But they, they seem, appear to live on their own. No. Some of them. Some do. Some don't. Are they boarding? Oh. Do they live with their parents? It's very unclear. I don't understand any of okay. it. Okay. So anyway, she's walking down the street and she's tripped by a dog leash. Mrs. Patterson is the person that's attached to the dog on the leash. And uh, she talks to Bernadette and she's like, where are you going? Bernadette! Bernadette! <laughs> uh, I'm going to call you Kim Bernadette from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, where are you going? It's super late. And Bernadette is like, I'm going to the inn, you know, to hang out with the other kids. And Mrs. Patterson says, are you going to hang out with the Crawford top 10? And I was like, what the uh, oh, fuck is my. that? She's like, and she, she's like, you know, if you guys spent more time on your studying than you do at the inn, you guys could be going to Harvard. So that's where I was like, okay, so they're in high school, but I, but why is she, anyway, so, uh, she's like, okay, thanks, Mrs. Patterson. And then she walks away. Mrs. Patterson walks away with her dog. <coughs> And we hear her say, come along, Winston, which is her dog. Winston. And then we hear Bernadette go, come along, Winston, give mommy head. And Ooh. I was like, oh, Bernadette. Whoa. Bernadette is burning people. Burn. Um, so then she like goes into like a parking structure, parking garage type thing. And she gets into her car and she has her keys in the glove box. Interesting. Is that a thing in the late seventies, early eighties? You just put I your keys in alive. The, you but, but like, uh, she just opened the door. I was like, wouldn't that just lead to just so many car thefts I all over the that place? People didn't lock doors. Interesting. Early on. Interesting. Okay. For it took a little bit for people to lock doors. I mean, I guess 
you wouldn't lose your keys as often if we could just leave them in our glove True, box. True, yeah. Did That'd she have great. like a purse or anything? Um, She did. She was just like free walking. She was just free walking. Like I think she had like a little purse with her that maybe had some, you know, some smelling salts in it. Some smelling, smelling salts? For when Why you would she have smelling salts? What am I trying to say? I don't know. Some mm-hmm. lip balm? balm? Lip balm. balm. What did what you did put you in this put in whiskey? whiskey? <laughs> I don't know. I feel insane. Okay. Is it just morning time? I guess. All right. So she gets her keys out of the glove box and then strangled. Oh, Oh. someone is in the backseat behind her strangling her with like a scarf or something. Well, I mean, you left your fucking car open, Bernadette. I mean, come on, Bernadette. This is what we're talking about. So Kim, what do you do and what does she do? So you're being, you're in the driver's seat Mm -hmm. and you're being strangled from behind you. With a scarf. Something. Yeah. Some sort of fabric. Uh, but I have my keys. You do have your <clears throat> keys, yeah. Um, okay. I think that I'm gonna like stab behind me with the keys. Mm. Okay. I mean, I have extremely long arms. You do. You do have Nosferatu think hands could, attached to monkey arms. I think I can, this is all very true. <laughs> uh, that are models. So that's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I ma- I make fun because I am jealous <laughs> about my own arm and finger length, <laughs> as are most humans. <laughs> so uh, I have faith that I could stab an eyeball out or something stab with, an a, eyeball with out. some keys. Okay, what does she do? Um, she, uh, let's see, what else could I do? Maybe she um, honks the horn. Ooh, and is like, alert! Alert! Okay. Doesn't seem like what she does because you are surprised by that. <laughs> I'm gonna do both of those things at the same time, though. Kim Burns, I'm gonna one arm honk <laughs> and one arm oh, stab. You guys, she's doing a super <laughs> cool aerobics thing right now that I'm loving. <laughs> That's how I'm staying alive. Okay, she. Um, oh, I'm I'll, I'll go a little bit further into what's happening. So, like, she's being strangled, and he's actually like kind of pulling her into the back seat a little bit. Okay, um, so she maybe just continues to crawl back into the back seat and then starts trying to fight him with her keys or beating him up a okay. little bit. So at least she's not being choked anymore, at least. Right. It's like you you attack the attacker. I'm giving you one point for you. <coughs> um, so what she does is she gets pulled into the back seat and then she starts trying to use her foot to kick open the door. Then this was pretty smart. She gets the door kicked open. Mm -hmm. But then we're like, oh, my gosh, it's bye bye Bernadette because she (sighs) is strangled. And we're like, oh, no, like Bernadette's dead. But she got the door open. Nope. She was faking it. So as soon as she felt him like let go after she like faked being dead, (gasps) she she got up and ran out of the car. Good job, Bernadette. See, right? I didn't even know that I needed to scream for Bernadette. Yeah. But I think I, I knew. You it's just like knew I sense. She, well, be careful. One second. Okay. So, but still, right now, Bernadette. Bernadette. So she's in. <coughs> she's in the parking lot. She doesn't run out of the parking lot. She just kind of like runs a couple cars over Bernadette. and like, kind of does that like, that like, old school thing where it's just like. <laughs> Like crying at the trauma. Bernadette. Yeah. So Bernadette. This is where I was like, Bernadette, you did so good. Like, just stick with just me keep here. Keep going. So she's in the parking lot. Get the fuck out of there. Sort of like doing a little cry face when all of a sudden we see that there's a another gloved black hand. Another gloved black, black gloved, gloved hand. hand. There we go. That is opening a ca- another car door from the inside. And she's like standing there like traumatically crying when all of a sudden the other hand grabs her. So Kim, the other hand has grabbed you in the car parking lot. What do you do and what does she do? The hand has grabbed me there inside a car. She's standing outside of another car car. and a hand like we only see like the hand and the arm like opens a door of a car next to her and like grabs grabs her from the inside from the inside of the car, of the car. yeah 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 um <clears throat> i'm gonna slam the car on the door on the hand okay <laughs> and uh 
uh, fuck, Bernadette. It's like she said she did so good the first time, but then I she started to got weird. Then she got yeah. Then she started to 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 shut down a little. So now it's like I think she either does the same. I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and say we do it hand in hand. Slam the door on. <clears throat> what else do you do? And get the fuck out of there. One point for you. She, I don't know, maybe she just had one good decision in her. I don't know. That was like, that that was it because she literally like gets away from the hand. Like the hand (laughs) isn't really, doesn't really have enough leverage to like hold on to her that well. Uh But she just kind of like runs to like the other side of another car. Keep running. Yeah. Why have you not fucking, were you in gym? Do you not have gym class? Don't know. Keep running. Like it was so. Run the track, Bernadette. (laughs) It was so, and so then. She kind of runs to the other side of a car. Stop it. But then she like bumps into someone. Oh my God. So who many people around too. Also has black leather oh gloves my gosh. on. But she says to this person, Oh, it's you. And, and we don't see the person. No. Okay. And she's kind of like, Help me, help me, help me. And then we see that this person has a switchblade in their hand uh-huh. and <gasps> slits her throat. No. Bernadette's dead. Bernadette. Get it? Because Bernadette. I got it. You got it? I got it. I I just just... didn't know if you heard it. Yeah, nope. I got it. (laughs) Got it. I was just trying to move past it. Move past it. Got it. Got it. it. And I wanted to bring it back around. I'm glad that you needed to Mm -hmm. showcase it. Yep. I sure did. So everyone got it. I know. I'm. I apologize to everyone. <laughs> but no what? You know what? I don't apologize. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. I can make as fucking many bad jokes as I fucking want. Yeah. You do you, Ketrin. This is your episode. Yeah. Uh, m- prepare for more awesome jokes. <laughs> okay. So now Bernadette's throat slitted. Now we're at the inn. I learn on Wikipedia it's called the Silent Lady Inn, which I thought was a very pretty name for an inn. But there's also like right next to I the inn. Don't I it bet just, I don't. Something about it feels yucky and creepy. It just sounds like an old timey inn in Ireland, where I'm like because in be. olden times women weren't allowed to speak. Yeah. Oh no, I was picturing like a silent ghost lady that like haunts the hearth room of the inn. Mm, doesn't feel that way to me. Oh, okay. Feels. Like, shut up, woman. <laughs> uh, that's true. Shut your mouth, lady. The the shut your mouth lady in is where they are. <laughs> so, hey, you got a vagina? Quiet. Shut your mouth. All right. So the inn is next to uh, a boat passageway where the the bridge has to, like, go up in order to, like, let boats through. So, okay. like, a ca- yeah. cars are driving over it, but then it's like, stop, don't drive over this because mm-hmm. it's a drawbridge. a drawbridge. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. And so we, like, see the drawbridge going up, and then we hear the debauchery and the and the shut the hell up lady in. And there are those dudes in hats that, like, they're, like, the little, like, they look like little cups, little buckets on their head. Okay, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's... Maybe like the the, um, the, Freemasons? the Freemasons is that what they are? So they're all sure. so they're all sitting around and they're singing ninety nine bottles of beer on the wall. Right, understandably so. Every single other person in the shut the hell up lady in is annoyed because that song sucks. Yes, and they're at like bottle ninety eight. Like I'm just like fucking kill me. Now the other Crawford ten are all arriving. This is basically like the click of the school they're the most popular kids and also their parents are the richest great so like that's the that's who the crawford top 10 cool are. and oh my god my favorite people. oh my god they just sound like so fun to hang out with so they're all in the inn and they're waiting for like the rest of the top 10 to get there and they're all wondering where bernadette is because like she hasn't shown up yet Alfred comes in and they're all giving him a hard time. Alfred's another one. And he comes in and they're all giving him a hard time for being a midnight taxidermist. I'm sorry, what? I guess this 10 to 35 year old high school college student practices a little taxidermy at home. And they're oh, making. Oh, that wasn't f- like a euphemism no, for something else? No, like he just. 
stuffs animals. And I was like, okay, cool. So then I'm he concerned. like, me too. So then he like pulls out a little rat from his pocket. Uh-huh. And they're like, who's that, Alfred? And they're like, and he's like, meet George. And it was a really cute little rat. It, like, it was a live rat. It was a live rat. It was real cute. And so now they're all like, oh, Alfred has a rat. You're fucking weird. Where's Bernadette? We're super rich. These bucket heads are annoying me. Okay. Uh, bucket heads, I don't mean that derogatorily. I just genuinely cannot remember what they are. And their hats look like buckets. I'm so sorry. So they get pissed at the hat dudes because their song is annoying. Right. And they finish the song, and then one of them is like, let's start over again. No. <sighs> so one of the, like, hot-headed top ten click kids is like, fuck you. Like, don't sing that song. I don't like it. And they're, like, about to, like, have a fight. And then another kid gets up and is like, hey, hey, hey. Like, no hard feelings. Like, let's not do this. Next round's on us to the to the bucket men Mm -hmm. and we see that Rudy like kind of smiles a little bit so we're like are you up to mischief Rudy who's another one of the top 10 Alfred is talking to Ginny and Ginny is going to be our main girl and he's like do you can I buy you a drink and she's like you know we all buy our own drinks and so then uh yeah, I was like, okay. I mean, hashtag feminism. Hashtag feminism, but also like who turns down a free drink is what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> hashtag feminism. Oh, right, right, right. So b- my feminism dictates that I would like free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> then Alfred starts freaking out because he can't find George, his rat. And he says to like one of the other girls, he's like, where's George? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I dropped him. But like, doesn't feel bad. Isn't like, I'm sorry, I just dropped your rat or everyone stand up and find this rat. She's just like, oh, I think I dropped him a little while ago. And so then we see that the dude that offered to buy the round uh, of drinks for the other guys is holding George. And we're like, what is he going to fucking do with George? So we see that that a pitcher of beer is being brought over to the Mm -hmm. Freemason Bucketheads. Mm -hmm. And Rudy stands up real quick and puts the rat in the pitcher of beer. I saw that. I saw that coming. Yeah. And so Hat Dude like picks up his jug of beer and like luckily George wasn't dead. He like climbs out of the cup and he's like, oh, me, me, me. I'm a rat. And so then they like fucking freak out and they're like, you damn kids get the fuck out of here. Blah, blah, blah. And so like all the kids like start running away like trying to avoid a brawl and all this kind of stuff and I'm like someone get George like they just let George run away nobody seems to care about George and so as they're fleeing we hear the ding 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 of the drawbridge is about to go up Mm -hmm. okay and all the 10 ding 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 goes the trolley ding 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 goes the bridge (laughs) keep going happy birthday (laughs) It was a great song. I, I was just going to let it play out. It's from something. It, it, it's from something. It's Is it from musical. The Sound of Music? You wouldn't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> so it's from they some all. Judy Garland musical. They all see the drawbridge going up and they're all like, let's play our game. I'm first. I'm second. 20 bucks to the last one if you can do it. But you can't because you're chicken. And they're all like, blah, blah, blah. And Ginny, who's clearly new to the group, is like shoved into one of the cars. Like Anne shoves her into a car and is like, let's go. They're last. And uh, Anne and Ginny's car is last. So it's like they're in the back seat and then there's two people in the front seat. Uh And I'm like, what the fuck are are they they doing? So they're driving and the bridge is going up and they're trying to make it over the bridge. That's what I thought they were going to yeah. do. Fucking terrifying. So like the first like three cars or whatever, are like we made it. You know, they do a little jump. The second to last car starts going up and then stops. It's like, fuck this. I can't do it. But the last car what? keeps going. No! And that's the car that Ginny is in. And she's like, what the fuck? Like she's losing her mind, freaking out. The fucking car jumps over and like, 
just makes it but lands like on its nose and this really annoyed me because like it lands on its nose and then falls back onto its four wheels and then keeps driving and I'm like that car is smashed to smithereens like that car cannot continue driving but they were just like haha wasn't that fun and Vir- uh, Ginny is like freaking out and she's actually trying to like jump out of the car mm-hmm. as it's driving rightfully so and everyone's like relax relax and she's like no so she jumps out of the car and she runs into the woods and everyone's like what's her fucking problem Anna's like just let her go like she's new to this that totally freaked her out also her house is right there like just let her go then they're all like okay like let's get back in the car and stands there and watches her for a while like running to her house Mm -hmm. and there's music where I'm like what is Anne up to? Is she up to anything? Like, I can't tell if she has a suspicious look or what's happening. Now we cut to Ginny walking through a cemetery and she kneels in front of a headstone and we realize it's her mom. Hmm. And she's like, mom, you'd be so proud of me. All the kids really like me and I'm (sighs) even one of the top 10 now. Oh my God. And we see that someone else is walking through the graveyard too turns out her house is like right next to a cemetery Mm -hmm. so it's like she has to walk through the cemetery to get to her house someone else is walking through the graveyard Ginny actually gets out like a pair of clippers and is like trimming the grass there's like a little box next to the headstone she's trimming the grass then she hears something she runs and she's grabbed by ATN And ATN is like, I'll walk you home. And she's like, no, thanks. And he's like still holding her. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I said, I'll be fine. And she like rips his arm off and storms off. So she, yeah, "Yeah, bitch. So she goes into her house. Dad is home and he's weird about something, but like, it's very cryptic. Like he's kind of like, this isn't the time, the time of night to be running around, um, And we've been over this and you agreed. And she's like, no, I didn't agree. You just told me what to do. I can't even visit my own mom's grave. My therapist says I'm progressing that soon I'll be cured. Okay. So I'm getting the sense that like the dad doesn't want her out that late or doesn't want her like there's something going on with her mental state. While this is being talked about, we see that Etienne is like in the bushes and like creep looking in her fucking window creep. and shit. And then we hear dad be like, we're so happy here. I don't want I don't want those memories coming back and ruining that. And she's like, dad, I want to be here. Like, please don't take me away from here. Like mm-hmm. I'm working on myself and. And, like, I just want you to, like, give me a chance, basically. And they're really sweet. Like, she goes upstairs and he's like, I love you. And she's like, I love you too, daddy. Like, they seem really sweet. ATN, meanwhile, fucking creepo, is, like, climbing up the lattice ah, work. Ah, no. And he, like, fucking climbs into her fucking window. What? Yeah, like, just being, like, a goddamn creep. So she goes into her room and she sees that her window is, like, slightly open so she goes over to it. Uh-huh. And she closes it and locks it. But like, I guess she was like, maybe I forgot to close it. Of like course, she yeah, was, yeah. you know, she wasn't like immediately like, I'm always the one who closes and locks my window. She was just like, that's weird. So now she's undressing and we see a POV that like someone is watching her from the closet. I'm appalled. Uh, just wait. It gets worse. So she goes into the closet and we have about... 25 real minutes of her hanging up clothes and taking other clothes out like I was like we can just suggest this we don't need to see like the button the the unbutton the step by step of hanging up your clothes she's also listening to like very strange 1980s easy jazz and I'm like this this sounds like do you live in an elevator is that what this is so then she takes her undies off and I say that because like we only see from like the knees down and then we see that she like leaves her underwear on the floor, which I was like, this bitch just stood at the closet for 25 minutes and meticulously hung up yeah. every single one of her articles of clothing and, <laughs> and then, then leaves like, her underwear on the floor. floor. That does not bode. That doesn't make any sense to me. So she goes into the bathroom and someone's behind the curtain. No, there's not just kidding. It was a shadow, but I'm like, 
this is why you have clear shower curtains. You would know if someone was back there or not. A shadow uh, wouldn't know. look like a shadow. You would just know that there was someone back there or not. Uh, so then she takes a bath. Someone is watching her. Like we have the POV of like someone is watching her. In the bathroom, she hears her fucking window open again. So she rushes over, screams, closes it. We see ATN jump down. And I'm like, ew. What a fucking creepo. Like the creepiest creepo. The also, fuck? we like saw him like kissing some other girl at the inn, like sitting with another girl, like not necessarily like making out with her, but just like being close to another girl. I'm like, what the f- fuck, dude? I, I mean, I don't that, I, that's fucking a moot point as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's it just the like- whole thing is just like, but it's more <laughs> that I'm like this guy is such a fucking creep. Like, why is he in this group of kids? Like, mm-hmm. he's a fucking creep. I guess because his dad is like a French ambassador or something. Whatever. So, next day in school, Anne and Ginny are running late. They go into their science class. And the headmistress, Mrs. Patterson, Winston's mom, is talking to them. And she's like, there was complete disrespect of the silent lady in and i'm like where are are they in high school are they in college why is the headmistress talking about something that happened outside I, i'm very confused but then wait a minute 1981 what they the could drink age? maybe they could drink at that time maybe they're all 18 and could drink yeah that's interesting because I feel like my... It's a great postmortem. <laughs> yeah, postmortem. Yeah, let when me write that down. When did 21 age 21 start? age drinking. That may solve all of my confusion, that they're in fucking high school. They're just seniors in high school, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she's like, you guys were rude. I'm going to get to the bottom of, the, of this. Also, where's your friend Bernadette? Nobody knows anything. Then the she leaves and the te- the science teacher comes back over and Rudy is like playing this joke where like the he turns up the static electricity or something and like so the science teacher's hair is standing on end and they're all laughing blah 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 and then uh, the science teacher is like okay settle down everybody and then he pulls out some disembodied frog legs and he's mm-hmm. like we can reanimate nerves oh. and muscles by using like electrical currents or whatever so like he makes like the frog legs dance with like an electrical Mm -hmm. current and Ginny feels weird about this and it appears to like spark some sort of flashback when she sees the frog legs Mm -hmm. getting reanimated and so in the flashback she's in this like weird chamber thing like an MRI type looking machine and she's got all this shit on her head and she's like twitching and the dad is in there and is like, why is she, why is she just twitching? Like she's in a coma and the only time that oh, she like shit. moves or does anything is when you hook her up to that machine. <gasps> and the doctors are like, we're regenerating her brain tissue. And the dad's like, is she conscious? Like what's going on? They're like, the way that we heal like bones or whatever, we're basically trying to do that with her brain tissue. She then in the flashback sits up. And she like starts to murmur something. They're like, what is she saying? And she's like, m- 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 my my birthday. And I was like, me too, bitch. Me too. <laughs> Cut to her in a doctor's office. She had clearly been describing the flashback that she had to her doctor. Doc is like, yeah, you were a guinea pig, but you were a super successful guinea pig. Like, look at you. We're just trying to recover your memories, but like you're not in a coma anymore and like you're not dead. And this is great. We just mm-hmm. need to like recover those memories. The way we heal bones, we heal and regenerate brain tissue. Spoiler alert, this movie is not based in science. So soon you'll remember even more than you did today and I won't let anything hurt you. Then they hug in a way that maybe made me uncomfortable oh gosh possibly but i was also like maybe they're just a very sort of affectionate father figure daughter figure type thing it's also the 1980s so rules were a little bit more lax about professionalism with patient doctors i'm not sure so cut to now all the 10 are at a dirt bike race and they're all cheering for creepy atn who's in the race All the top 10 are there. 
ATN is racing and he like pushes someone off course mm-hmm. and like they drive into a creek. ATN wins. Mm, great. <sighs> Barf. Fuck you, ATN. So they all fucking congratulate him and they decide to go to the inn afterwards. And ATN is like, I just need to clean up my bike and then like I'll meet you there. And one of the girls is like, oh, Ginny then says to ATN, because she actually doesn't know that it was ATN in her house. Right, right. She's like, too bad Bernadette wasn't here to see you win. So I guess ATN was like Bernadette's bow or something like that. Mm-hmm. Bow? When have I ever said that before in my life? Um, I've heard you say it. Oh. I've used it. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> great. I mean, glad I we cleared know. that up. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's not a weird word. She's like, she's like, you know, I'm sorry, Bernadette wasn't here to see you win. Great job. And he goes, well, I had to win because I was carrying this close to my heart. And he pulls out her fucking underwear. (gasps) Ah! Like, what a fucking Ah! creep. I, what the fuck? Okay, so I'm so upset. This is not necessarily like what will keep you alive. But I do, you can earn two points for what what do you do? What does she do? Is this to creepo bonus ATN. Or it's an actual question. It's an actual question. Oh my God. But I, what I'm, I mean is that like you I'm I'm telling you that you can have fun with this one because it it does not result in your life or death. Oh right. right, right. It feels that way though. I feel so upset. You know who should feel I like feel it's a life or death matter is ATN. Fucking violated. Yeah. Oh my god. Um fuck. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you turned into such a frat bro right there. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. Yeah. I feel very violated. I know. And they weren't even like clean underwear out of your drawer. Like they were fresh off your cooch. I don't care no i'm saying it's all it's like (laughs) it's terrible like i'm like yeah but it was out of my room like he was waiting for you to take off your underwear in your own room um i i don't know why i feel much more upset about this than half the things we talk about Because it's talk about a up. lot of really fucked up things. and Because there's like the added. So like someone has your underwear, right? So you're like, that's fucked. But then you realize that that person <sighs> was in your fucking room the mm. night before and you mm. didn't know it. So you're like, what else did he see? What else was that? I mean, that's why. Like, it's. Um, and because he's like acting like it's a good fucking thing in front of my fucking face right now. And he's like a super. I mean, this is where I go where it's like. He's super powerful. His dad is really powerful. He's super wealthy. So it's like you feel powerless. Inti- powerless. Yeah. Like if you were to report him, say, you wouldn't be able to trust that anything would happen. Mm-hmm. That's why I wanted to give you this question because I was like, we're living in a different time and it just like is so fucked. Like there's very little that can be done. Like she just has to deal with. <laughs> so I have to answer this question from the 70s. Yeah. As to what I would do. Yeah it makes it harder because like I know what we would do now like we'd be like I'm calling the cops I'm punching you in the throat yeah, fuck you yeah. I'm taking you down I don't care how powerful you are yeah, like I'm go I'm go I'm going scorched earth with this shit and to be honest I would only even do that now as right. my adult self right and if I was that age what? I probably wouldn't I mean no I know for a fact I wouldn't because things yeah mm, like this and worse happened and, yeah and do shit we had to grow into ourselves um so okay i will start by let's go with punch in the throat i like that isn't that just so great i'm gonna kick in the balls too oh yeah double whammy that's what we call a double uh, whammy that's what we call a double whammy maybe start with balls then throw because it's like Kick in the balls first, and then he kind of bends over, got and it. then his throat's right at punching right, level. Right, because you're short. Yeah, yeah. You got to bring the throat <laughs> down to your level. Yeah. yeah. Can I you? Mean, bring my your... arms are long, can so you... I could reach either way. But... Right. But I'm thinking like <laughs> leverage for you. Yeah. Like you really want. I get in a better. Stance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me your throat, sir. 
Bring me your throat. <laughs> uh, why am I so upset? I think it's because I choked on whiskey earlier. I already feel violated in my body. ATN so is that whiskey upset. in your lungs right now? Um, I don't know why I'm having a tough time with this, but I'm very upset. Uh, okay. And then shh. All right. She's tough because it's like clearly things have happened to her. She might want to just go easy. Be fine. It's fine. It's fine. fine. But then she also like flipped out in the car and was like, I'm out. bitches." So it's like she'll still stand up for herself a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say. All right. I'm going to fucking fuck, fuck, fuck. I think she's going to ask. I think she's going to be like, I think. I don't think she's going to let it go completely, but I don't think she's going to like lose her mind. Like, I think she's going to like be like, how, wh- how did you get these? Like what, what a little bit? Um, yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. One point for you. God damn it. Because I anyone in this movie, out. here's what I feel like you punching him in the balls and in the throat. I would be very surprised if he like reported that because it would be, a stain on his manhood yeah, of course. that he like got beat up by a girl mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I feel like that's good. She basically is just like, Ugh! and like walks, a- walks away mm-hmm. and tells her friend. And she's like, he's such a mover. I was like, a what mover? Is a mover. Mover. Like, I guess, I mean, just in the context, like just someone who's like moving from girl to girl or like mo- moving in on girls, okay. that kind of thing. And Anne is like, uh, Anne is like, well, Bernadette loves it because Ginny is kind of like, how does Bernadette put up with him? And she's like, Bernadette loves it. Like they get hotel rooms and fuck in the hotel room every night. And I'm like, how does that equate to her being okay with him breaking into someone's house and stealing their underwear? Yeah. Like that doesn't, that's not the same thing. They can get a hotel and fuck all they want. Yeah. That doesn't mean she's going to be like into him stealing girls underwear. Yeah. Whatever. Bernadette's dead. So whatevs. Bernadette. So cut to Bernadette. ATN's bike garage. And he's got this machine that's like keeping the tire spinning, mm-hmm. s- the front tire, so that he can like clean it. Like it's right. easier to clean. And he's kneeling down in front of it. And this dude comes up behind him, but all, pushes again, his face into the wheel and kills him. Great. Close. <laughs> all we see is black leather gloves. Oh, good. Honestly, I'm on black leather, leather glove team right yep, now. Me too. I wasn't for Bernadette, that's, but I'm on board. That's right why I now. actually didn't give you a dead or alive for this one because you would have had to be ATN. And, like, and I was like, no, no, I shove my own face. Shove my, fucking, I shove my own face into the bicycle because I realized what a horrible fucking piece of shit, fucking horrible person I am. Yeah. So, dude comes up behind him. ATN does not see him at all. So, black leather gloves just takes ATN's scarf. It's blue and gray. I mm-hmm. think it's the school colors. That'll be useful later. And just very lightly picks up the picks scarf. Up one little end. And Ooh, puts it into the spoke. And ATN is like, ah, whiskey in my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just see the black leather glove hand like continues to like rev it uh-huh. so that it keeps going. He it's, got whiskey. He got whiskey. Dead. Bye. See ya. Boy, bye. You don't get to take them undies to hell. I'll see myself out. God. We're, I, I'm off today. It's a good this thing is, it's your birthday. Yeah. Because otherwise. Day. We're never recording on this day ever Never, again. ever again. What is today? Today is September Tuesday. 24th, Tuesday. <laughs> what? I didn't mean like the date. No, we're never I recording day. on Tuesday, September 24th ever again. I think it's just a Tuesday. Okay. So now they're all at the inn again. The shut the fuck up lady inn. And they're wondering where ATN is. Alfred is also not there. So now they're missing Bernadette, ATN, and Alfred. Which one's Alfred? The taxidermy. taxidermy. So Ginny and Anne decide that Alfred is weird. And they're going to go see what he's up to. Because Bernadette's missing and ATN is missing. Does Alfred have something to do with it? Because he's a fucking weirdo. And I'm like, okay. isn't he your friend? friend? <laughs> but whatever so they sneak into and right now like he's the one we're mad at yeah because i'm also like you don't know that atn was murdered you don't know that bernadette was murdered 
they could all be hanging out in the same place. I don't know why you're assuming that like two of them are not okay and Alfred is the culprit. Right. Uh, so Jenny and Anne decide to go see what he's up to and they sneak into his house and there's a bunch of taxidermy everywhere and they go into like his workshop. It's all dark, but they see all of these like plaster of Polaris masks of humans, people. And then they see that there's something covered over with like red liquid underneath of it, like a bulge covered over with a Mm -hmm. sheet and red liquid on like a like a tray. Okay. And so they're like, what the fuck? So they're like, let's lift up the sheet. They lift it up. Bernadette's head. (gasps) Oh, my God. So. They try to run and leave because they're like, Bernadette's fucking head is on a tray with blood around it. Alfred's right there. (gasps) He starts talking about how Bernadette is his masterpiece. And he's like talking real slow and creepy. Alfred. And he's kind of like, he's not blocking them from the door. So I'm sort of like, why are you not immediately running away? But he's just talking creepy. He turns on a light. And when we look more closely, it's a wax figure. And he like plucks one of the eyes out and he's like, it's fucking wax, you idiots. He appear. this appears to also like spark some sort of memory with Ginny, but we don't know what the memory is. But I'm like, still creepy, dude. Yeah. Like still creeps. The fact that you have like a perfect replica of your missing friend's head is creepo. Yeah. And that's what the other ones were. Like he's like making masks of everyone's head i guess i don't know that's his i guess he can come to our plaster players night it's fine he could teach us some shit so he could lead a workshop sure let's come on over alfred it's fine so next day in miss patterson's office she is on the phone with bernadette's dad when jenny comes in jenny was called into her office and miss patterson is like where where are they to Bernadette's dad on the phone and I'm like is this a boarding school like why isn't she boarding because like Jenny goes home to her dad also Mm -hmm. like why is Miss like it was all just very weird Mm -hmm. so she talks she then hangs up and she talks to Jenny and she's like your dad is very rich and that makes you entitled just like the rest of your little gang I'm giving you detention to jog your memory as to where your friends are. And uh, I'm like, what? What? That doesn't. What are you talking about? She just like has a beef, which isn't completely unfounded, but like she has a beef with these kids that are like this little gang that runs around. And I'm like, but that doesn't mean that they like know it where doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. And like a detention, it was whatever. Mm-hmm. So then the secretary is like, Mrs. Patterson, Etienne's father is on the phone, the ambassador. And so she picks up the phone and she's like, oh, yes, he, you know, we don't know. I'm sure he's around here somewhere, basically. (laughs) I'm like, this is, we need some protocol here. This is not working out. This does not make me have any trust in 1981 schools. So Anne and Ginny, they decide to go to the movies and invite the whole gang. And they're kind of like laughing about like, did Miss Patterson give you detention too? And I'm like, your friends are missing you get this is an emergency where are your friends so they're like let's go to the movies and at the movies there is a fight between two boys I think Rudy and one of the other fucking boys who both like Maggie whatever they're all in the group together yeah they're all in the group together it's a very like incestuous group been there right as have I and they're all like the whole gang has fallen apart we're all fighting with each other and it's kind of stressful and that's when Ginny tells Alfred you know what you can buy me that drink now POV black gloves walking up to a door uh so we've cut away it's the night after the movies and or like after the movies it's still at night and POV black gloves walking up to a door one of the 10 is in his garage lifting weights I think it's doesn't matter Greg I think it's Greg and he's lifting weights like on a bench right and someone walks in he goes oh it's you 
And he's like, Amelia's on her way over soon. But like the black glove person doesn't say anything. We don't see anything. And he's like, hey, can you put some more weights on this? So the figure does it. Puts like weights on either side of the barbell. And he's like, still not heavy enough. So he's like, put on two 25 pounders. So he's talking about how the gang is bickering and falling apart. And the figure puts two more 25 pounders on either side. And he's like, oh, wait, now that's a little too heavy. And he's like trying to hold it up. And instead of taking it off, the figure moves the stand away. Mm -hmm. And so he's like holding it up. And the figure now is standing over him with like another weight, like standing over his torso. And he's uh, Greg is like barely able to hold it up. So, Kim, what does he do? What do you do? So you're holding a barbell that's too heavy above your head. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What does he do? Um, I just kind of like drop it behind my head. Okay. What does he do? Um, he, it falls on his neck. Yay. Finally. That's exactly what I said. Like, just drop it back. Like if it dislocates your shoulder, fine. Like better than like choking. Yeah. So. He's like, help me, help me. Like, you got to help me. Instead, the figure drops a 25 pound weight on his dick. Oh, shit. And we like see his like the little bulge of his dick and just like a weight on it. And then we just hear curse splat and it's his esophagus being smashed. Oh, my God. And uh, so Greg is dead. Cut to Amelia, who's like one of the other girls, comes in to the garage and she walks in and we expect her to see like Greg all like curse splatted, but he's not there. There's no blood. There's no body. There's no nothing. So Amelia is just like, what the fuck? Like that's fucking weird. Cut to just that. No one's there. Just that no one's there. She's like, why would Greg tell me to come over and then like not be here? Cut to voiceover. It's still like on Amelia's face, but now we have a voiceover of what the next scene is going to be. And it's a bunch of kids going, kill him, kill him, kill him. We see that they're all at a soccer game. Okay. And they're cheering on their team. Amelia tells Ginny and Anne that she's worried about Greg because like, that's not like him. He wouldn't just take off without Mm -hmm. telling her. So now that's a third third kid missing. Then they're like, hooray, hooray. Their team won. Alfred was the goalie and like did a good job being a goalie. Maggie sees one of the boys. His name is Rudy and he's hugging Ginny and like she kind of like gets kind of a jealous face on. So we're like, okay, like is there something going on between Rudy and Ginny now? So Rudy says he wants to show Ginny something. Meet me after I shower or whatever the fuck. And he goes to the shower or something and we see that he runs past a flower bed and sees something and reburies it Mm -hmm. like kind of bends over and like kind of like covers up something but we can't really tell what it is and then like runs over to the showers cut to rudy again is this a boarding school what is happening cut to rudy taking Ginny into an old church chapel tower place and she's creeped out and he's making like creep voices just trying to be you know whatever Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he's like, I can't believe you've never been here. And then he's like, oh, right. I forgot you're new to Crawford. And she goes, I'm not actually. I I was here four years ago, but they've all forgotten me. Mm. And then they get over to the bell. So they've gone up to where the bell is. So they're in the bell tower and they look down and it's like a super long drop. And it's like, you know, there's a rope that goes down to the bottom so the priest can like ring the bell. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden... Rudy starts saying to Ginny, you know what I could do? I could cut this rope all the way to the almost very end, like so that it's still attached, but like barely. And Ginny's like, no, don't do that, Rudy. Don't, don't do that. Then he gets like really creepy and the camera's like close in on his face Mm-hmm. And Ginny's getting freaked out. And he's like, I brought a knife with me. I have uh-huh. a knife right here. Uh-huh. And he pulls out the knife. And then he closes the hatch to the downstairs. 
and starts approaching her with a knife. Kim. What? What do you do? And I'm only asking what you do and you'll find out later. Um, w- w- What am I like next to right now? Like where are we? You're in basically like an like a church attic type situation. You're in a bell tower. So there's like only two ways down would be to like jump down through the bell part or go back down this hatch that was closed. So like you're a little bit trapped. Um, It's confusing because like, I think he's my friend. I know, (laughs) but he's like walking at you with a knife. Because I'm like, uh, my instinct is like push him down the, bell hole right and then go down the trap um or um start ringing the bell was what i was thinking too to like get people's attention okay so ring the bell um or yeah let's just ring the bell i guess i was never good at that uh climbing the rope thing in gym class (laughs) nor was i (laughs) okay i think that's fine we don't know what she does okay. because what we realize later, she's kind of goes into like a fugue state. Whoa. So she doesn't remember what happened. All we see is that it cuts to a priest coming in to ring the bell now. And he sees that like, there's like a couple little spots of blood mm-hmm. on the ground and he pulls the rope and it just detaches Like he pulls it and it just falls and the end of the rope has like blood on it. And so the priest really jumps to conclusions and he just goes, murder, murder, (laughs) murder, and like runs out of the church screaming murder. (laughs) So (laughs) cut to Ginny asking her doctor. She's like, I've got to talk to you as she. So she's like run to the hospital where her doctor is. And she's like, I got to talk to you. As she's waiting for him, she sees that someone is wheeled by on a gurney and he's like all bloodied up. And it gives her a flashback to when her brain was being operated on. And the doctors like remove a part of her skull. And like we see all of it like remove like a flat, uh, like a Uh bone flap. And then all of a sudden her brain starts kind of like pushing out of the hole. And they're like, her brain is swelling. Her brain is swelling. And they're like, that's it close it back up and they're like she's dead but she's not dead because we see that she's like still like aware Aware. of what's happening and remembering it but basically the doctors are like we give up her brain smelling goodbye close it on up so then it cuts back to her in the doctor's office and she's like screaming remembering this and she's like they killed part of my brain they killed part of my brain and then she starts screaming about rudy And she's like, something happened today with Rudy. He had a knife. She thinks she killed him, but doesn't remember. Next day, Doc gets, goes outside to get the paper from his house. And he's listening to the news as he goes out to get the paper. And the news is talking about all the missing kids. And all the kids happen to be super connected, super wealthy parents. They report that the bell tower found a bloody knife but no body, which he remembers is like what Ginny was screaming about. Mm -hmm. But Ginny has like so many like weird memories and stuff that like clearly the doctor didn't take her seriously when she's like, I think I murdered my friend. But now he's like, okay. So now we see Doc is going to the school library. Like he's like asking a student, he's like, where's the library? And they like point him. All the kids of the whole school are being questioned now, like the whole school, about where these fucking missing kids are. Doc takes Ginny aside and he's like, you got to tell me exactly what fucking happened in the bell tower. And she's like, I, I don't, re- like, I don't remember. And as they're talking, someone, another kid runs in and is like, officer, officer, to like the officers that are standing around. They found something outside. So the whole fucking school goes out to see what they found in a flower bed buried Mm -hmm. it's a scarf Mm -hmm. that looks just like atn's scarf Mm -hmm. next to the scarf uh they pull out a like a big chunk of something covered in dirt cut back to Ginny in the library she's now kind of all by herself she didn't go outside to see what was going on 
and all of a sudden Rudy's body drops down from a balcony. Ah. But he's like hanging upside down by his feet. And we're like, oh my God, like what is that? And then he's like, gotcha. And I'm like, what the what? fuck is happening? And he says to her, he's like, what happened to you at the bell tower? And he's like, it took me forever to like cut my hand out of that rope when you when you ran out. I had to get stitches. And she's like, it was all a joke? And he's like, yeah, it was all a fucking joke. I was just like trying to like make it look like I was dead. Okay. Like super fu- Like I'm like, these jokes, y'all need to work on your delivery. Like this is <laughs> not, you all are fucking weird with these jokes, man. So as this is all happening, we cut back out to the garden and we see that the doctor is just handling this thing that could be an active crime scene. No gloves. Nobody's doing anything. Just everybody's standing around tra- traipsing through an active crime scene. And the doc, who's not a cop of any kind, is just like, can I see that? And the cop's like, sure. Hands him the whatever it is, uncovers it, and it's a skull. Oof. But then the doc turns it over and is like, it says property of Crawford Science Department. And they're like, ha ha, funny joke. And we learn that Rudy did this whole thing. He wanted to fake his own death, bury some uh, shit in the flower bed, make it look like he was dead. And I'm like, this is not, you have, your friends are actually missing. Right. And he made a whole joke about it. And everyone's just like, ha ha, funny Rudy. Whatever. So that Rudy. That he's a funny Rudy. So Maggie hugs him and they like make up or something because Maggie, I guess, you know, they're all incestuous. Ginny is now walking with the doctor and she's like, can you not tell anyone what I just told you about Rudy? Because otherwise he'll get in trouble. And the doctor's like, sure. And I'm like, was there just like no, there was just no rules in 1981. There was no protocol. There was no, anybody can handle an active crime scene, whatever. So she I says she so. wants... <laughs> she's i think so no God. rules <laughs> as far as i that's what i've heard so she says she wants the doc to come over for her birthday dinner on sunday then the doc goes home and calls her over and is like do you want to go smoke weed in the pool basement or whatever so they go to the pool basement it's more like a boiler room but like one of the windows in the boiler room is to the pool but like the deep end of the pool. Mm -hmm. So you like, you look out the window and you can see like underwater of the pool. Okay. Yeah, it was neat. And they're all smoking weed. And Rudy is now like kissing on Ginny. And I'm like, weren't you just making it? But Maggie's not there. And they're talking about Alfred again and how he's a creep. Then all of a sudden Ginny looks out the window and sees Maggie's body <gasps> floating down past the window. Oh no. So she gets up and freaks the fuck out and runs out of there to her car. The other kids didn't run out and we then see that Maggie like opens her eyes and is like, mm-hmm. "Hi." Mm-hmm. So many dead jokes. Ha. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so funny if I just faked my death over and over again, Kim? <laughs> Wouldn't Hilarious. you just love that? Wouldn't you think it's so funny? So Ginny is driving home and she's kind of freaking out. She's having a recovered memory of someone drowning. That's all we're Yeesh. seeing is like these flashes. So now she's walking through the What set. happened to you, girl? I, so some shit girl, is going on happened? in her brain. So she's walking through the cemetery and someone is watching her again. We can tell that someone is watching her. We see that it's Alfred. Okay. She's putting flowers by her mom's grave. Mm-hmm. Alfred is behind her. We, she doesn't see him and I'm like why are these kids such fucking freaks like why is he coming up behind her so sneaks up in a real pervy way wearing the same scarf that ATN had which is that's where I was like I think this is like the school scarf, school scarf. and he has black leather gloves on Uh-oh. and he's holding something in his hand Ginny whips around and stabs him with the shears shit yeah he falls to the ground. His hand opens. It was a rose. Oh, but I'm like, but Alfred, why are you such a That's creep? How you though? Got stabbed. Like you snuck up behind her in a dark cemetery, not saying anything. That's how you get stabbed. Breathing heavily. 
yeah, I don't know that I feel like super bad that you got stabbed. However, Ginny now appears to be in some sort of fugue state because she's not really like reacting to the fact that she just stabbed her friend. Mm -hmm. Next day, dad is on the phone saying he needs to get a chopper to Calgary and he doesn't know how long he'll be gone. And Ginny comes downstairs and she's like, how like, are you going to be back by Sunday? And he's like, what's Sunday? And she's like, it's my birthday. And she's super pissed that he might miss it. He feels really bad. He promises he won't. Dad leaves. Ginny looks still a little fugy. <laughs> Cut. She's got a light fugue. She has a light her. fugue. So what's the definition of fugue? Uh, it's like a state where like you're doing things, but like it's a blackout okay. basically. Oh. But I think there might be like a more medically definition of it. Right. So cut to a dance. 1981. So it's very disco-y. Um, Talking about all the kids missing. Nobody seems like that. Like I feel like if we had four of our friends that were missing, we'd be, be concerned. pretty upset about it. So Rudy says the cops are dragging the canal looking for oh, the bodies. Shit. And I'm like, of your friends? friends? Yeah. Steve says to Rudy, he's like, can you go dance with Maggie? Like, she's clearly still into you. Go dance with her. So now, like, Rudy and Ginny had been dancing together and Steve and Maggie had been dancing together. And Steve's like, Maggie's not in me. She's into you. Go dance with her. And so Rudy's like, is that cool to Ginny? And Ginny's like, yeah, that's fine. So like all this very like incestuous little group. Mm -hmm. So now Ginny and Steve start dancing. And Ginny's like, basically like, do you want to get out of here and bone? And I was like, to Steve? Yeah. Oh. And I was like, Ginny, my, my. And she's like, I make really good midnight snacks. You hungry? Oh, and I'm like, me too, my Ginny. heavens okay. to Betsy. So she says goodbye to Anne and she's like, I'm taking Steve back to my place. Bye. Like she was just like, I know what I want. We're going back to my place. My dad's out of town. Anne kind of looks at her and follows her out. Cut to Ginny's place. Steve is drinking wine by the hearth and it is a straight up hearth because they have money. So like this is clearly their hearth room. They're sitting on like a bearskin rug. <laughs> oh my drinking wine in front of a hearth it was Sounds beautiful lovely. oh my god it was lovely i'm in who wants to take me on that date yes well one moment <laughs> so she brings in her midnight snacks of giant meat kebabs <laughs> <laughs> i was like you just do you girl late night snack just a little late night meat kebab snack so jenny lays down and they start making out and then Steve is like, my ass is burning because he's like, need to neither mm -hmm. fire. So they sit up and they're like laughing. And she dips kebab <laughs> in some sauce. And she's like, do you like it spicy? <laughs> she like and sexually feeds him she meat She sexually kebabs. feeds him meat kebabs. <laughs> fun. And she feeds it to him. And he's like, mmm, meat oh. kebab. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, and she's like, do you want some more? And he's like, yeah, I want some more meat kebab. Stabs him in the throat. Oh, shit. With all that meat still on there. And she just like, she's she like, just like, room. yeah, she just like stabs him through the back of his neck. That's a great way to kill someone. Right? I was like, okay. So right in the back of his mouth head. And then she like smiles. Mm -hmm. Next day. Anne drives up to Jenny's house. Jenny wakes up all groggy and shit like looks hungover and she looks out the window and Anne's like get up bitch <laughs> <laughs> and Jenny says she doesn't remember anything from last night like she doesn't remember the dance she doesn't remember anything and Anne's like well let me in and so Jenny throws the keys to the house down to her and she's like I'm gonna go take a shower come on in Jenny is now in the shower and she's like looking at looking at the shower head and she starts to have another fucking flashback mm -hmm. this time it's Ginny in the car with her mom mom is driving in a rainstorm very upset and drinking out of a flask uh, uh. saying they have no idea how much this hurts where's your father when we need him then we see the drawbridge going up mm. 
mom is drinking, storm, drawbridge going up, you're Ginny in the passenger seat. What do you do? What does she do? Um, I think she, hmm, this is interesting. Because you also have to remember, like, you're a kid. So, like, if this happened four years ago, you'd be at the most 14. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that she is tries to get her mom to stop, but her mom doesn't stop and that she jumps out of the car. Okay. That's what she does. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, I'm going to do the same. I'll give you a point for that. I was trying, like, I feel like tucking and rolling out the car wouldn't leave you any more dead than I could stay alive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she does not. She's just like screaming and yelling, stop, mom, stop, stop. Then the mom realizes like what is happening. Like she's drunk because the car gets stuck on the on seam the of the draw bridge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now the mom is like, oh, shit. And Jenny's like, yeah, you drunk bitch. And so the drawbridge keeps going up, going up, going up. The car falls into the lake. They're caught in the car. Mom is stuck like in her seatbelt and the car is like filling up with water. And the mom is like, swim to the surface. You know how to swim. Swim to the surface. Open the window. But Jenny's like, no, mom, no, mom. Because she realizes as soon as she like opens the window, mm-hmm. like car's going to fill up. Yeah. Mom is stuck. So mom drowns and we just see Ginny swimming up to the top. Uh, cut back to the shower where Ginny is. Ginny is now sitting outside of the shower in a robe, but the bathroom is completely flooded. And she like kind of comes to and she opens the bathroom curtain and is drowned in the <gasps> bathtub. Oh, my God. So now Ginny is freaking the fucking fuck out and she's calling for her doctor. The doctor gets to the house and Ginny is like sitting on the stairs and she's like, I killed her. I killed her. She's in the bathroom. And the doctor is like dragging her up the stairs. Ginny is screaming, like not wanting to go back into the bathroom. And he's like dragging her and he's like, look, look at it. And like he's pulled the curtain back and there's no body in there. Mm. So he's like, you're hallucinating Mm -hmm. these things are not happening you didn't kill Rudy you didn't kill Anne so he tries to walk her through why these things are coming up for her because they still don't actually know what what happened with the Mm -hmm. mom Mm -hmm. so he's trying to like piece it together and he's walking her through why these things are happening he's like it relates to the kids playing chicken over the bridge yes like this kind of all started Mm -hmm. then and the doc says he'll stay till dad gets back Jenny's like, it's my birthday. And he like touches her cheek and says, happy birthday. She like kisses his hand and falls asleep. And this is where I was like, okay, I think it's not creepy. I mm-hmm. think it's just like she's desperate and he like take cares of her, mm-hmm. takes care of her. Cut to cops combing through the woods by Jenny's house. Cop pulls up to her house and is knocking on the door. The doctor answers. And they're like, yo. Anne Thomerson abandoned her car out there. Her parents can't find her. And the last thing we heard was she was coming here to Jenny's house. Can we talk to Jenny? And he's like, she, he's like, she, I've been here all weekend. She hasn't had any visitors. And the doc says that she'll call them when she wakes up because she's not feeling well. So then the doc picks up the paper after the cops, or the cop like handed, it was like, here's your paper, by the way. Doc picks it up and he sees something disturbing on the front page, but we don't know what it is. He then goes upstairs to Ginny and tells her about Anne and she like freaks out. And she's like, so I did fucking kill her. And Doc is like, no, they're just missing. And he's like, but what do these kids have to do with this? Like, what is it that these kids have in common? Like, I feel like it has something to do with what happened to you. We And he's like trying to piece it together. Mm. She says, it was my birthday. And I'm remembering what happened. My mom wanted to throw me a party. All the richest kids were invited. So this was like four or five years ago. Now we're seeing like the scene of what happened. So it's Ginny is like a little 13, 14 year old. 
and the mom who's just like drinking vodka like water sitting standing around like a table that's all decorated for her birthday with a birthday cake and they're like did you, and the mom's like did you tell them at four o'clock and she was like yeah and she's like well it's five I guess this is what the rich call fashionably late and Ginny is just like kind of like defeated on the bench then the dad calls and he's like I'm really sorry I'm not gonna make it back for Ginny's birthday and can you let her know that I love her? And the mom's like, tell her yourself, you bastard. So she hands the phone to Ginny. And Ginny's like, it's OK, dad, I get it. And the dad's like, are all your friends there? And she's like, yep, we're having a great time. Hmm. And then hangs up the phone. And mom is like, why did you lie to him? I'm a cunt. Ah, I'm so mean. And Ginny's like, because they're not coming, mom. Ann Thomerson is having her own party and all these kids you invited, they don't even know who I am. So they're not going to come to my fucking birthday party. Mm. And that's when the mom takes another big swig of vodka and she's like, well, if they won't come to your party, then we'll go to theirs. Mm. Kim, what do you do? What does Ginny do? Um, I assume she gets in the car with her mom it makes it sound like this is like when the thing happened mm -hmm. but maybe i'm wrong um i'm gonna um, i'm gonna um, i'm gonna run away and be sad for run the, away and just be for sad. like the day okay like not forever I'm going to be like, no, mom, <laughs> I don't want to go. They don't even know who I am. OK. And what does she do? I'm going to maybe hopefully I have a friend. Maybe a I friend. Can, maybe I have other friends I could go to. That would be cool. Here's hoping. And you said she gets in the car. <sighs> I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, like if your mom's been fucking throwing back vodka for a day, I'm not going to get in the car with her. Oh, but again, I guess like drunk driving like wasn't even illegal to like 1994 or some shit seriously what I, i'll look that up in a postmortem too i i was shocked to learn when drunk driving actually what? was illegal that's crazy pants cut to mom outside of the gate at ann thomerson's house and it's like raining and she it's like a big you know gate to the driveway Will Thomerson, who is Anne's dad, is at the gate telling her, like, go home. And she's like, I'm a rich woman now. You hear me? I can't be bought off ever again. And she's screaming and crying at the gate in the rain. And Anne Thomerson's dad is just like, go home, bitch. So Ginny tries to go up to the gate and calm her down. And she's like, those stuck up assholes think they own the world and we're going to make them pay. Cut back to Ginny telling the doctor this whole story. And she starts screaming, no, mother, no, and runs out of the room. The doc, like, lets her go, like, is just like, Ginny, come back. OK, like, I'll let her just scream this out. Then we see someone coming towards the room with a poker. A woman walking back towards the room where the doc is. Poker to ah. the face. <gasps> Now the dad pulls up to the house in the rain with gifts. He made it home for her birthday. Mm. Goes inside. The house is dark. He's calling for Ginny. No answer. Goes upstairs to Ginny's room. Covered in blood. Covered. Wall to wall covered in blood. So he runs screaming through the house. Ginny! Ginny! He runs out door to the cemetery. But like empty. Just blood. Not like a dead body. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Sees her mom by... Oh, sees her by her mom's grave, mm -hmm. turns her around. It's not Ginny. It's someone else holding a gift. It's Amelia, like looking terrified, like she just saw something absolutely terrifying. And the dad like kind of runs back and sees that the wife's grave is empty. Mm -hmm. The body has been exhumed. <gasps> then he kind of trips over something because it's dark and raining. And it's the body of the doctor next to the grave. So he's looking through the trees to the guest house and sees that there's a light on in the guest house. So he goes inside. It's all dark. The dining table is all set up. 
people appear to be sitting around it, but it's really dark. Uh-huh. He turns one of the chairs around. Uh-huh. It's the mom's decayed body. Uh-huh. In comes Ginny, carrying her own birthday cake with candles. Great. Happy birthday to me. Uh-huh. Happy birthday to me. We see that she's propped up all of the bodies of all of the kids that she killed. Uh-huh. One is slumped over like that she wasn't able to prop up and it looks like it's Anne that she did end up killing mm-hmm. Anne. Ginny walks towards her dad with a knife and says, you kept your promise. Kim, what? as the dad, what do you do and what does he do? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I'm going to need to, let's see, I definitely want to not be near my crazy pants daughter and a knife. Uh Uh-huh, yep, or the decayed body of your Mm -hmm. exhumed ex-wife, right? Not ex-wife, real wife, I guess. Um... I think I'm going to book it out of there and get some help. Okay. And um, he is going to try to like be like, what's What's he going to do? He's going to be like, hey, hey. Of course I made it back. It's your birthday. Okay. Like appease her. Maybe. That's one and a half points. Okay. Point for you. Yes. Get the fuck out of there, bitch. Like, yeah. goodbye. Your daughter is cuckoo banana brains. Like, you, get, there's nothing to be done. She's murdered a bunch of people. He kind of does what you do. But the majority of his reaction is like sitting at the table, head in hands, like, I defeat. I I am defeated. <laughs> and Ginny just walks over. She sits her dad down and puts a little birthday hat on him. Great. And she blows out the candle and makes a wish. Great. Cuts the cake. Fun. Asks dad, do you, do you want a big piece or a little oh. piece? <laughs> he blames himself for letting her be a science guinea pig. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. He's like, I yeah. failed her yeah. as a father. Yeah. Don't let your kids be guinea pigs, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Because I'm like, if there's some treatment, nothing else has worked. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Don't judge yourself, yeah. dad. You were just doing your best. So he's all woe is me. She turns and slices his throat. <gasps> oh, fuck. Bye. Wow. Good night, dad. Now the lights are turned up. She's got like an oil light. She turns the light lights up and she goes over to the slumped over body of Anne and pulls her head up it's Ginny what there's two Ginnies what and our Ginny is sitting in the chair mean Ginny who just killed her dad says oh dear sister <gasps> We can't have you looking all dirty for your own birthday party. What? She takes her blue sweater off and now they're both in the same outfit. Like Uh she, me and Ginny takes our Ginny's blue sweater off. Now they're both in the same outfit. They're both wearing these like little white dresses. And she says, since I ruined your last party, I wanted to make sure we were all here for this one. And now they'll all get to watch you die. Now, the two Ginnies are like fighting because mean Ginny goes to like stab our Ginny and they're like fighting and our Ginny grabs mean Ginny's hair and pulls it off and it comes off. And so does her face. Underneath, it's Anne. Anne. So she walks through all the times that she followed Ginny and then chloroformed her and then put on a Ginny mask from one of the masks that Alfred was making. Okay. I, I'm not going to lie. The, the masks that Alfred was making 
didn't look like they were movie grade <laughs> seamless masks that would fool anyone into thinking that Anne was a human underneath there, let alone an exact replica of another person they know well. Fine. So then she tells her, I put on a Ginny mask and I killed everyone. Ginny looks around at all of her dead friends and says, you're just like your mom, a whore, my father's mistress. <gasps> That's why my mother left us. And she goes to stab our Ginny, but Ginny bests her and stabs Anne. Now our Ginny is Uh standing there in a white dress covered in blood in a room full of dead bodies. Just as a police officer comes in and says, what have you done? Fuck. The end. Happy birthday to you. I know. That's how it goes out is <laughs> happy birthday, dear Jenny. Happy birthday to me. Oh, God. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> happy birthday to me. So Anne's mom laughed because... Because Ginny's mom was having an affair with with her dad, so yeah. she's mad at Ginny and her mom. Yeah. Do we think that they are actually sisters? Yeah. So Anne and Ginny are half sisters. Wow. Yeah. It's right. Like that. Yeah. That's so interesting. That reminds me a lot of April, April Fool's, Fool's Day. Yeah. But also a little bit of um, like a little scream up yeah. in there. Yeah. But it's also. Like, I mean. This was up in Scream, right? Really. Yeah, but I'm like, but. that mask, though. <laughs> like, it was not that good of a ma- Alfred is not that good. <laughs> that was fun, though. Yeah, it was fun. All right, let me total all of your points. Hey, guys, this is Kat. And Kim. And we just want to let you know about our brand new Patreon we just launched. You can find us at www.kimandcatstayalive.com. And you'll also find merch on there. Check out our merch store and follow us on social media at KK Sam podcast. We love you. Bye. Okay, bitch. What did I get? Happy birthday to you because you got 18 and a half out of 27 points. And listen to this shit. You're fucking 12 dead or alive. You got eight out of 12. Wow. I was seriously like going down and I was like, what the (laughs) fuck is happening right now? Like, I was just like, did she see my fucking paper? It was really impressive. Thank you. But then you got the last three wrong. And I was like, okay, no, she didn't see it. (laughs) Um, So yeah, that was happy birthday to me. It was fine. Sounded fun. Yeah. Well, because I'm I'm a phenomenal storyteller. I enjoyed it. Uh, As movies go, you know, it's a little what the fuck is happening? (laughs) Why are all these kids faking their own death and going, ha ha, good joke. I... Mm the 80s why are they i hope alfred poor alfred should have gotten a job as a mask maker for the movies but um yeah that was happy birthday to me yay um so i guess that's it uh happy birthday to you thank you don't forget to um follow us on all the social meds as a gift for ketrin please give us a five-star review on itunes yes please um and, uh, you know, go sign up for our Patreon for all of our postmortem bone con. That would also be a great birthday present to me. Uh, go check out Podbelly Network. They're awesome. And, um, you know, bring me cake. <laughs> <laughs> and whiskey. Cake and whiskey. But don't give it to Kim because no, she'll die. <laughs> I can't. Oh, I'll choke on it. So this has been uh, Kim and Kat Stay Alive. Maybe. So until next week. Stay alive. Stay alive. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Put a ghost in me. I'm, I'm done. done. <laughs> <laughs>